Welcome to Revolutionize Your Retirement Radio, bringing you insights and strategies to help you create a magnificent and fulfilling second half of life. Here's your host, certified professional retirement coach and best-selling author, Dr. Dorian Mincer. I want to welcome everybody to the Revolutionize Your Retirement interview with expert series. I'm uh, Dori Mincer. I am president of Revolutionize Retirement and your host, and I'm delighted that you're all with us. So let me, without further ado, introduce Denise Arte. She is a terrific person. Let me just tell you a little of how I know her, and then I'll tell you a little about her. I actually heard Denise speak a while ago on teleclass a number of years ago, and then I had invited her and she had presented in another form that I have, and we become friends. And so we Skype every once in a while and catch up with each other. And recently, her middle son just had a, his first uh, grandson. And so Denise came to the States from Australia, and I wasn't able to get down to Delaware. I wasn't able to meet in New York because of some family obligations I had, but she took the train up and we had a few days in Boston and I cleared out my schedule and it was so much fun. So we met in person and actually in February, my husband and I are going to be in Australia and so we're going to stay and visit with Denise. So it's it just is amazing how these wonderful friendships can develop that start out with the internet. <laughs> so let me tell you a little about Denise. Den- Denise says that her proudest achievement is being mom to three adult sons, three daughters-in-law, and four grandchildren. She spent over 40 years as an educator and is a a multiple award-winning facilitator, innovator, entrepreneur, speaker, leadership coach, author, and one of Australia's pioneers in vocational education and training and online learning. And she's been doing all of this since 1996. She has facilitated learning from the classroom to the boardroom, and she says, of course, her swimming school. Denise's working career began as a primary teacher. She set up a swimming school, and she was a high school teacher, and also has been trained and is a hypnotherapist, postgraduate in career and guidance, and she's created a vocational educational school and now enjoys a slower pace working with her middle son. And she and her son, Marcus, deliver these really innovative leadership and management programs globally in both the private and the public sector. Today, she's going to share with us her five keys to personal success and help us look at how many balls are we juggling and who gets the crumbs. And this is clearly an issue that can happen throughout all life stages, but we're going to focus on this stage of life. And her approach to life, work, and plays a combination of loving what I do, she says, and anything she does has to pass what she calls her five non-negotiable tests. So we're going to learn all about that today. So I'm delighted that you're all here. And welcome, Denise. And why don't you tell us a little of what your view is of retirement is first? Maybe we can start a little with that, and then we'll move into your program. Great. Thanks, Dorian. Thank you for inviting me to come on. And more importantly, congratulations on your TV uh, accolade with the Today Show, which was so exciting. So I feel like I'm being interviewed by a celebrity. (laughs) So thank you. (laughs) Um, So I guess for me, one of the funniest stories uh, and probably the truest story is that in terms of retirement, one of my one of my cousins was fortunate at 55 to say he was going to retire and he was having a bit of a traumatic time about it. And so we started to talk a little bit about it. And then it's when I started to think about, for many people, who you are often becomes the job you do. And so I said to him, what's always been the thing that you've wanted to do or have a hobby that you hadn't had time to do yet? And he said, he's always wanted to restore furniture. And I said, so rather than think about retirement, could you think of a career change and that you could be a furniture restorer? And so we started to talk about it and think about it and he he began to develop that more and allowed himself and gave himself permission really to enjoy that part of who he had not actually nurtured for a long time, which was that creative part. 
And then from there was able to, of course, have a whole lot of other things unfold in his life. And he got so busy that he still couldn't do a lot of the furniture restoration. Mm -hmm. However, involved in voluntary work and a whole range of other things that really has fulfilled his life. And he's now nearly into his 70s. It's Mm -hmm. been for him a mindset change. And I think that for many people and for a lot of us, uh, particularly now, I don't feel like I'm 60. I feel I'm still 21. And and so for me, it's about how do you, how do I keep myself interested so that I'm interesting? And that for me is really important. And that's where my sort of five, my five T's come into it, which is it fun? Do I like who I'm being in this relationship? And am I making a difference to others? What can I learn? And what can we learn together? I really love that. And I think that those are very important questions to ask. And that importance of staying relevant to ourselves, but also having fun. I, I really do love that you, that fun is such an important component of what you do. Tell us more about how you came up with that. And let's start with what are your five keys to personal success and that issue about how many balls are we juggling and who gets the crumbs. I think it's so easy to have ourselves be the ones who get the crumbs. But tell us a little how you've developed this program and what's what are some of the things important for us to start thinking about? Sure. One of the things that I guess <laughs> I always, I know now with my granddaughter, like she enjoys my quirky, as some people say, sense of humor. And so for me, it is really about how do you make things so that it's fun? And also, I I guess the essence of those non-negotiables. The question that that I always ask and an example that I give is if if you make, you're really good at making decisions. So let's say you're at work and and you're making decisions and then you go home and your partner says to you, oh, darling, what would you like for dinner? And you go, I don't know, don't ask me. It's because that sort of decision-making bouts has been used up. And so therefore, your partner gets the crumbs, like that not the lovely part of you, but that irritating, frustrating part of you. And for some people, they make those, they don't get an opportunity to make all the decisions in their workplace. So they end up making all the decisions at home and no one even gets a look in as to what's going on. So again, the family gets the crumbs, not necessarily the lovely part of us. And so it becomes really important. How do we maintain that balance in all that we do? And do I like who I'm being? And sometimes when we're in a situation, and particularly as we're starting to think about what are some of the things that give us great joy, and has there been a part of us that hasn't enjoyed that great joy or great sense of adventure or fun or whatever it is that's been important to you as a value, how do you capture that? And how do you bring that into what you do so that it's, it becomes the challenge for the day? So one of the one of the important things is almost like at the start of the day, what is it going to be your clear intention about your non-negotiables? And I came into being with the non-negotiables very early in the piece because I decided that when we became parents that I wanted to enjoy a really great relationship with my children when they were old. And for me, there were the five key non-negotiables. And one of those non-negotiables was, and and non-negotiables is something I really want people to think about right now. What are the non-negotiables that they have in their life? And people sometimes go, I don't know what my non-negotiables are. So if we come you explain a little of what you mean by non-negotiable? I think that may be helpful for people. Sorry to interrupt All right, there. Thank you. Yeah, no, that's yeah. okay. I, I get on a bit of a roll, so please jump on in any time. <laughs> I will. <laughs> and I have to tell people it's 2 o'clock in the morning in Australia. It's wee hours of the morning for, for Denise right now. Oh, it's, it's good. Any, any chance to talk, I'm awake. And so one of the things, <laughs> one of the things that, that I had with the, the my boys growing up was that they weren't allowed to drive with anybody in the car until they had their license for four months and they were not allowed to be in a car with anyone until they had their license for four months. And I talked them through this from an early age. That was a non-negotiable. It was never going to shift. And I remember this one time, my eldest son, he'd had his license for about three months and he was at a party. We were living in Brisbane at the time. And he rang me and he said, oh, mum, can he drop his mate home? And I said, no, that's a non-negotiable. I know it never happens to anybody listening on the call. Anyway, he rang again and he said, mum, I really want to bring his mate home. I said, no, that's a non-negotiable. I I don't even know why we're having this conversation. Anyway, the phone went dead. 
And then I was getting a little bit excited about all of this. And anyway, he rings back. He said, oh, I didn't hang up on you. And I said, yes, really? I said, I'm coming to get my car. So Alan and I got in his car and we drove across to the other side of Brisbane. He came out. He got into Alan's car. We came home. And then we went upstairs and we were arguing. And I said to him, why are we arguing? I said, this is a non-negotiable. He said, yes, but you've always taught me never to accept no for an answer. And I said, except from your mother. (laughs) Whilst we bring in that sort of humour, the non-negotiable stand. And fortunately, our group of friends also really liked that rule. It was easy for the children to actually do that because what it did, it gave them a reason or or an excuse or whatever it was. If they weren't confident enough to go, no, I don't really want to give you a list, at least it, they knew that they weren't allowed to do that. And so for me, that was a really important one. And so when we start to think about our non-negotiables and whatever it was that that operated so the kids weren't allowed to run around the pool that we had. They could walk quickly, but no running. And everybody who came to our house, which was always an open house, they were the rules by which everybody had to honour. And so I asked the people listening today, what if you were to start to think about who you are first up? Who are you? Not anything about the work you do, but who are you as a person? That is, do you make friends easily? Do you find it a little challenging? Do you find it comfortable speaking? Do you enjoy travel? Whatever it is, who are you? What are some of those core things that make up who you are? And that, and when we run ask those questions in the workshop, Dory, it's really interesting because most people actually talk about the work they do rather than who they are as a person. Could you say more about that? Because I know, I know that's one of the important things you say, that you're not just your job, you're not just your work. Yeah. Um, how, how do you, get, so, how so do you help would, people so. get in touch with what those core items are? It comes to part of what sometimes what happens is that can, you can feel a little bit irritated or upset, and that can be when someone jumps on your own core values. And if something, for example, you may like structure and order in your house, and someone else might not even take the same sense of pride and leave things laying around and have things a bit messy. I'm dealing with a couple at the moment and they're well into their 80s and are really finding conflict. And I said to, they were actually here, and I said to the wife, I said about loving her husband and spending time, I said, oh, yes. And I said to him, and, and what about, do you love her? Oh, yes. I said, can you say, I love you and I appreciate. And he sat there and he said, this is really hard. And if it's really hard to say it to someone else, how do we say it to ourselves? And the question becomes, who are we? Do we have a challenge speaking about things that are important or demonstrating that we care about someone or appreciate someone? That's somebody who we are that we find that difficult. Or do we find it easy to say, I really appreciate uh, all that you do. I really love the fact that we're able to share and plan our retirement together. Aren't we lucky to have reached this stage and we're healthy? Maybe one of those core values is about being healthy, about enjoying our sexual being, about all the things that are really important for us is who we are. That's very helpful. I know when you and I were talking before, you were saying you you want people on the call to to maybe just take a moment or so to mm. to just even jot down. Uh, and would you like yes. them to do just to begin to that think be about? Great. Okay. Yep. So, so if you have a so let me ask your question hand, to the, yeah. to your listeners. Uh-huh. Can yeah. you write down five key things for yourself? And I do five because it's much easier to remember because you can hold that in your hand very easily, and you can go with it. What's one of those things? Two, three, four, five, and then when you can use that almost like an anchor for yourself that becomes important. And so, what are those five things that drive you that are important for you that make up who you are? So if people would like to jot those five things down, maybe they could, in the, on the paper that they've got, maybe they could trace their hand, trace mm. an outline of their hand, and in the palm of that, they could write their five key things that make up who they are. And we'll come back to this outline of their hand a little bit later. That's great. Let me just encourage people to just take a moment or so to do that. And just know that if you're at your internet and have any questions or comments, just send them to me and I'll be able to ask Denise or have her clarify. Yep. Great. Mm. 
we had wanted this to be we'll give you, I'll put somewhat my interactional. I'll give you a minute and 15 seconds, just like I do in my head. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really funny when people have to actually say it back. But, and there's lots of gaps because they're not able. And then I'll jokingly say, and how long have you known the content? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, quite funny. And people might want to type in just a couple of things that they've written, just mm-hmm. to give people maybe a help on other people who are a little bit stuck and maybe. Oh yeah, that would be great. If any of you want to just share, and you can say when you send the comment, mention my name or don't mention my name, and I'm happy to do it either sure. way. So that would be great if any of you want to share what you've come up with. Let me ask you a question. Larry from West Virginia is asking, Denise, do your non-negotiables have consequences when they're broken? For yourself, yeah, because you feel ripped off. Because this is something that's important for yourself. Take that example that if Nathan, if my old son Nathan, I've said his name now. <laughs> if my eldest, hopefully he's not listening now. They're used to it. If my eldest son Nathan, if I hadn't have felt that, and that's time up too, though. If I hadn't felt that I was honouring something that was really important for me, then I'm ripping myself off and also ripping my son off. So they understood that I came from a place of their safety and their concern because them being safe is really important for me. So we had different cues about being safe. They learned from a very young age how to, in the days where we had phone boxes here in Australia, they learned how to make reverse charge calls. We always had money left outside the house so that if they ever needed to get a cab home from anywhere, there would be money there for the cab driver. We set in place a whole range of things to keep them safe. And so for me, that was the non-negotiable. So my non-negotiables in my, when I've had my business and start 25 staff, one of those was that all everybody had to leave and say thank you to other people in the office for a great day. There was always a thank you and always a good morning when people came in and the rubbish bins had to be emptied. I couldn't no one could leave with the dirty rubbish bins. So that was that was my non negotiable. And I think it's really important that you understand what's important for you because when that doesn't happen mm-hmm. then you actually right. feel ripped off it. You don't know that you are, you just know that you feel disappointed or that there's mm-hmm. an upset. And the upset is an opportunity to know the truth. What What is it that the upset is that maybe someone's not honouring part of what's important for you, yet you may not have expressed it for the simple reason that you're not comfortable to express your feelings or your thoughts. And that sometimes then comes mm. back to knowing who you are. Mm. That's great. I have a couple of people who submitted things now. So let me just share. Yes, One yes, is yes. Mary from California. And she says, let's see, her five things are feeling connected to my community, being healthy, feeling loved, feeling like I matter, feeling joy through dance, nature, relationship. Um, I'm just going to mention a a few others. Another person who didn't give me permission to use her name said, learning, adventure, family, music, physical competition. And Elizabeth from Minneapolis said she loves your idea of drawing your hand on the sheet and being able to use that. And hers are health, helping others, and society. And another person who hasn't necessarily given me permission to say her name says her five things that drive her are God, family, sense of well-being, and connectedness, purpose, and money. Mm, Those very are the nice. ones that I've gotten. Thank you. So yeah. far. Um, Thank you, everybody. Yeah. That's great. And a, oh, a couple more things. Mm-hmm. Another person says family, friends, social justice, personal growth, nature. And mm-hmm. another person really turning. Oh, and Elizabeth added safety is another top on her list. And she comments, which I think is really true because it hits me too, that the non-negotiables is a way to teach etiquette and core principles too. Um, yes. So that it, it's yes. very, it's a nice vehicle to think about what's important. And But what you say is so key that sometimes these may be important to us and that if we don't express that to somebody else, they're disappointing us and they don't know why. And so, right. And that's when we end up yeah. with the crumbs. Ah. Because it's oh, far out, all the broken bits and all the bits and pieces around the place. And, and we sometimes stand there with this sort of lost feeling or, or disconnect. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. And did I answer the, the gentleman that asked that question? Did I give him the answer? Was that okay? Or was he needed? He, he, he can send back to me if 
he'd like yeah. to expand more. Right. But I, I think that yeah. you gave that example of the consequences. And sometimes the consequences just can be just as you say, saying, feeling ripped off or feeling disappointed. Yeah. But Absolutely. that there really yeah. are. Yeah. yeah. So go ahead. No, and that we don't actually say that. We just get annoyed. Like we just get yeah. angry. And right. getting angry, that doesn't mean anything. It's, you might as well stand there and speak another language. Whereas cause under, it's about what's underneath the anger is the disappointment. And what's under that is often one of our non-negotiables have been stood on and we didn't even realize. It's really important that if everyone starts to think about, well, wait a minute, what's my upset? Oh, that's one of my non-negotiables. Wait a minute, I didn't know that was important to me. It's the same as as, as when people in a, in a workplace, when we're doing some leadership work, I'll say to them, particularly for people who are managers or have climbed a ladder of success, and then I'll say to them, so what when you first started out in your work life, like when you were young, what was it that you were, what drove you to that particular vocation? And often, it, for example, if people who have been a tradie, like an electrician, a plumber, or someone who likes to play with the tools, then what happens when they get to a uh, senior role is that they've got all of these half-started projects in their shed because that's the part of them, that creative part or that building part that or that problem-solving part that doesn't get nurtured in the workplace. So they start all these projects at home and don't realise that was the part that's missing for them in the workplace. So they do it at home, but they give themselves the crumbs and then it drives the family nuts because nothing's ever getting finished. And one of the things that, that then happens, I'll say to them, where in your a timetable over your next month, do you give yourself permission to go and play down on the shop floor or with the tools or wherever it is, that's the part of you that is really missing or wanting to go and play. And so as soon as they put that in once a month or once every three weeks, what happens is they're actually nurturing that part of them and it changes their whole way of being. And it's just quite, it's quite magical how it happens. So if there's a part of you, like when you were growing up and you were about... 10 or 11, what did you promise yourself to be? Can I ask your listeners to take a minute for this one? What did you promise yourself to be that you wanted to be when you grew up? All right, just if everyone just wrote it down. Don't think about it. Just write it down, whatever it is. This can go on the outside of your hand. <laughs> okay. <laughs> whatever it is, what did you promise to be? I was sharing a story before the other day, that I always knew I wanted to be a teacher. So imagine this. I'm probably seven or eight, and I have a younger brother or sister, and then nine or ten, and then they would come home from school. And in the days, for those of you young enough to remember, I had a little blackboard and chalk. And so we'd sit out in the backyard, and I'd be the teacher. And they'd, we'd have little chairs, and they'd sit on. And here we are. They'd been a day at school, and then they came home to be school. It was schools in the backyard. And the other thing that I've always loved are books. So I set up a, lo- a library in my bedroom with the cards, index cards and everything. I don't know if you have the same system in America, but mm-hmm. you have at the back of the book, you glue in and the little cards and you write down your name and then the date that it's got to come back. My, my sister was sharing with my kids a few years ago, do you know what your mother did? Anyway, what happened was I set a library up and they'd have to come in and borrow a book. And then if they didn't come every week, I'd go and find them, and, not that our house was big, but I'd go and find them and say, you haven't been to the library, come here. <laughs> and my voice couldn't, because that's what I did. And, so, <laughs> and for me, it's always been that passion and that joy of being in a learning space. So that I'm always, so every year I take on a new learning, whether it be singing for one year or learning to dance mm-hmm. or whatever. So that's another one of my non-negotiables. And one of my boys, we decided we'd learn the guitar together, but you have to practice. So we didn't progress very, very much. But yeah, so that's another really important thing. Mm-hmm. When, you, when you start to think about what is it that you really want? So it, does anyone who's listening, had they written down what they wanted to be when they grew up and they actually did that or enjoying that or it's still part of their life? Have we got some people who, or is there such people or as that something you forgot about that maybe that's something you could consider now as part of this giving yourself permission to enjoy all the things that, that you put on hold? If any of you want to share, please do. And I do want you to know that Larry, who asked the question, said that he thanks you very much. Yes, you did answer his question. But if any of you want to Larry. share, because I think the things that you're talking about, it's it's amazing how 
we make assumptions about ourselves and about other people. And what you're proposing, which I do find so helpful, is just thinking about what are the, as you say, non-negotiables, or what are the kind of rules, or what are the things that are important. And also the just the example that you gave about the person at work going more onto the floor with people and that nurturing a part of what's important to him. It's part of, I, I know in some of my coaching work, and I think many people on the call who mm. do coaching use character strengths as a way of thinking about what are the things that, that are the essentials of you, your essence, mm. and mm. are you able to use those things? And if not, is that part of what the disconnect is, whether it be mm. with a partner or with your work or children or whatever. And I love your notion of the non-negotiables. Maybe tell us a little, I know there's a slide and perhaps Donna can hold the slide up and you can describe the slide for the wheel. not at the computer yeah. about the wheel. Yeah. And maybe sure. talk a little about okay. that. So, well, let me just see so if anybody if got, wait, before we move on. Yeah, I'm just conscious we yeah. only have an hour and I've got three hours to fit in. No. <laughs> <laughs> so Mary, because you asked if, for people to share yeah. and yeah. Uh, oh, actually, I now that I read it, it's actually a resource. Mary from California says a great resource for understanding how you need to be acknowledged and help to clarify non-negotiables or feeling love in relationships is the five long love languages by Gary Chapman. Mm -hmm. I don't yep, know that book. Cool. That's nice to hear about. Okay, great. Thanks, Mary. Okay. Let me just say, okay, let's see. So Elizabeth said, I did it. It, it was a teacher too. still love learning and sharing what I learn where appropriate. And yeah. he says, cheers. This is an excellent call. And then another person who I don't have the name said, uh, again, teacher, did it full-time for six years, later worked as a counselor and taught in university night school, also have taught workshops throughout part of her life. So some people, it sounds, have integrated that. So that's mm. really nice to see. And I just want to underscore before you move on to the wheel that it is so helpful to, to let yourself think about what was that and what maybe got put on the back burner so that you can mm. integrate it into your life now so that you mm. don't end up regretting that I never did such and such or whatever. Anyway, yeah. onward to the wheel. Could have, would have, should have. Oh. Could have, would have, should have. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The wheel is, I find, really helpful in putting things into perspective because as we get to this, our choice stage of life, which is what I like to call it, or our increased choices for many people. It's about saying, what are all the dimensions and all the balls that we juggle and which part of us get the crumbs? And so in the wheel, there are the four components, which is our life relationships, the self and well-being, business and career and community and humanity. And within those, there are all the different components. So within our, our life relationship, we've got our families and our friends. In our self and being, it's our health and creativity and self-expression. In our business and career, our financial well-being, our career, our time management, our being in a place of, of joy around the things that are important for us around our work, at our work approach, and the community and the humanity, the concern for environment, and our volunteering work. And so that's always been a core value. The boys have always been involved in being in the community as well, and that being from sport as well as giving their time to the community. And I've always and for those of you who, who give the crumbs and give away all their time, one of the ways that I differentiated that for myself was because I was one of those people and I think as educators we often are, uh, we don't ever value our time and so we think that we're helping everybody is the primary concern and then the last person we help is ourselves. So we end up with the crumbs. So one of the things that I did and particularly Marcus has been a great teacher around that, is over the last six years I've said, okay, rather than give away my time and for nothing, because that's the thing that I sell is my time and that's my commodity, then what I can do is so that I can still honour and something that's important for myself, I can take on a couple of charity cases. If I didn't want to charge someone for our, the transition coaching or the family coaching, whatever else that we're doing, then I give myself permission to say give two charity cases a, a year and that and if I've got two that I'm working with at any one time it may not be the same two then that honors the part of me about giving back to the community but what I was finding was I was giving my time so much that it was I needed to fit in my business time and so it almost became the imbalance 
And then I started to go, I'm not a charity case because then I've ended up with the crumbs because I've still got to put food on the table. No one down the road's going to care whether I've put food on the table or not. So then I've got to be honouring myself. And I then said, okay, so then I give my time to a charity and then I'll, and or I'll provide support to people who may need it. <coughs> that was a way of honouring myself and stopping giving it, leaving myself with all the problems. I think that's really, for me, that was really important. If we could have a look at underneath the wheel, there was a series of questions about rating those relationships. For those of you who haven't got a, a computer in front of you, then I'll read out the, each of these and you can write between one and five how you would rate that relationship. One being needs a lot of practice, five being really where it, I want it to be. And this is no, there's no judgment around yourself on this. It just really whatever number pops into your head, just run with that one. Okay, so the first one is around the relationships that we have in our life. So partner as being husband, wife, whatever. So whatever your life partner is, the relationship, if that isn't current in your life, then the most recent one, what was that relationship? And then go from there is the next one is mother. Again, people who are living, not living, what is the what is or was that relationship in each of those circumstances? Mother, father, and if and that may be guardian, it may be a step parent, you can add the the title if that's more comfortable for you. Children, maybe stepchildren, maybe in-laws. Because I, my one of my other philosophies is that for me, there's no distinction between a daughter-in-law and a stepdaughter. And when, and that was the other question that I've. The one thing I missed out on with my boys was saying, who builds the bridge when someone gets married? Is it the son who has to build the bridge to the wife's family, or is it the wife that has to build the bridge to the son's family? I'll leave that with you. Okay, so your children. Siblings, <laughs> I've got lots of questions. <laughs> Friends, is the other one. Then we've got career, one to five. Finance, home, is it exactly as you want it to be, is it not? Am I going too quick? No, I'm just wanting to just reassure people, Don't you don't have to worry about writing all of them down. You might want to just think about it now because this yes. material is – uh, on the event page. So even if you're not in front of it, you're going to be able to, it was, Denise it wrote it up like a workbook. Listen yeah. to the right. video, or listen to the yeah. recording or something. Listen yeah. to the recording. Good thinking. Right. Thanks, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Self-care. Health. Level of fitness. <laughs> general Your general appearance. And that includes your posture, how we sit, how we stand because that gives away how we feel about ourselves as well. Time management, our creativity, self-expression, making a difference, having fun, my community involvement, my environmental concerns, and my concern for humanity. And they would also be the actions that I take. And anything else, there's some boxes there if anyone else wants to add some others that that are also important to them. So once I've done that, and then the next thing then that comes into is the question that I like to ask is, what are the rules that run your life? And so the rules become part of the things that also cause an upset. They are different to your non-negotiables because sometimes we don't even realize what rules we have. For example, one of my rules is that people need have to be polite, right? I guess it's part of my non-negotiables as well, but it's really a rule that's important for me. We workshop everyone in our family. And so my 84-year-old mum, who isn't always practiced that please and thank yous, <laughs> <laughs> and one of my rules is that you use please and thank yous. And so I had, they were, she was over the other week and one of my girl, because it was her birthday, I was made nothing to. Anyway, her, one of my girlfriend's mums came because they're friends. Anyway, she was saying something and my mum said, oh, look, I'll pick you up. And my girlfriend's mum go, oh, no, it's okay. And I said to her, mum, what is it we say when someone's being really kind to us or wants to give us a compliment? And so she goes, thank you. <laughs> and it's really that's one of my rules is that people are kind and 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 please and thank yous at the end of your sentences and it's really interesting when we want to teach our children 
please and thank you. You you give you this, what you say, and and we expect our kids to say it, and yet we don't often use it ourselves. And that, what are some of the rules then that run your life? If you put a must, I must do or I should do, that's a rule. If people could take a couple of minutes, again, this will run outside your hand, not in your hand yet. Okay, so what are some of the rules that run your life? What When do you should on yourself or I must on myself? And that's a rule. If anyone wants to write a couple down, what are some of those? So you can send them if you'd like. Yeah, I just want to comment on the earlier exercise too. One person said that she had wanted to be a nurse because she they cared oh, for nice. her grandmother when she was growing up and she did pursue it. But in the pursuing it, the experience helped her realize that really wasn't what she wanted to do. Sometimes it's a helpful thing oh, to great. test yeah, it out. Yeah, that just sent she was yeah. there. That's gorgeous. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and then another comment is just me. how Oh, I was just going to say the, another comment from Elizabeth is how helpful this handout is because you what you've done is you've created these four areas in the wheel and it's a way to remind yourself that you have to mm-hmm. honor yourself. And it's true. It's a visual that we all can think of on the air. When yeah. you're in the airplane, they say, put the oxygen on yourself first before you help other people. So you yeah. need to honor yourself in order to be there for other people. I just thought that was Absolutely. a really nice comment. Yeah, thank you. That's lovely. That's lovely. So if everyone's written down a couple of the rules, so can you just have a look and see which ones you want to keep and which ones you want to let go of? So when I've given this as an example, someone's written down that I must be in bed early on a Sunday night because school the next day, right? And this was a person in their 50s. (laughs) And so they never went out Sunday night because that was a school night. And suddenly they started to realize this was a rule that they carried and they hadn't realized that actually going out... (laughs) Sunday night was actually okay because his wife couldn't understand why he didn't ever want to go out Sunday night because he'd say, oh, I have work tomorrow. But really, it was a rule about you don't go out Sunday night because it's school night, school the next day. So here he was in his 50s carrying his rule. Here's one example. Elizabeth says, I should straighten up my office each time I complete a project. That's one of her shoulds. Um, Great. Okay, so I guess so the question got to... is that a good is yeah. that one you want to hold on to or let go of? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and if you want to, it's like the word yeah. try. Okay, so I'd like yeah. everyone to put a pen in front of them, and I'd like them to try and pick the pen up. <laughs> you either do it or you don't. So Elizabeth, <laughs> are you going to clean up your office before you leave every day, or are you just trying to let it go? And either one is perfectly okay. It's the shooting that isn't helpful because it makes yourself wrong, and then you feel guilty and that whole cycle. So you can make a decision that maybe twice a week you might clean up your office and leave the stick that you beat yourself up with in the office that day. <laughs> Yeah, this can be very freeing. It's a, your your yeah, examples it's are great fun. ones, Denise. It's yeah. really nice. Yeah. Yeah. But again, you. that it's an option and a mm-hmm. choice to think about which ones those serve you well and which ones don't. And, and some may serve you well because it keeps you organized, but the other, if you are if you do whip yourself, then that's not as helpful. I think that's great. Ab- absolutely. And, and so as we go to have a look at now, go to the wheel right now and what are some of those areas in your life where you've looked at your scores? Can you have a look at where you've put some ones? And again, just uh, this is a awareness raising here, where you've put some ones, where you've put twos, where you've put threes, fours and fives. So anywhere that you've put threes and fours, what we like to call areas for practice, the same as ones and twos. So could we invite you to select five of those that are going to be your areas for practice? And I'd like you, if you've drawn the outside of your hand or gone traced around your hand, where your wrist is, put down those five things. So it's almost like a ladder, yes? So you'd have one underneath the other. So five that you've got lower scores than, say, four or even three, whichever ones you want. This is your area to practice now. So, for example, you might have had, so it might have had with, Finance, you might have had four, two, or a one. We won't put negatives today. We'll just stay with the positives. <laughs> okay. So we'll just put, let's say, finance one. So you'd put one, you'd put finance in the level of where your risk would be as your hand is on that page. That makes sense to people. And just with five of those. 
So these yeah. are the, I mean, the five it. areas that are lower that you really need to work yeah, on. Yeah, that are lowest. Okay. We call okay. them areas yeah. of practice. Yeah, right. the ones that are the lowest ones. People write that. I just want to comment. Somebody said that your issue about that you either do it or you don't. This person says, so says Yoda from Star Wars. Do or do not. There is no try. <laughs> so. Absolutely. Unless you're playing football, then there's a try. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Okay. So we've got everyone written down five of those. That'll be terrific. And and then what we're going to do now is start to have a look at about our part of how we're going to put these rules into to action. So in one of the things around that we start to look at around our non-negotiables, and these are the balls we're juggling. So the reason that I've had you list those five, they're the areas in your life that you're currently giving yourself crumbs, yeah? And these are some of the balls that you also have to juggle. So you're going. So it's really important now that you start to think about how you're going to stop giving them the crumbs, the things that are important of those five, and then being reasonable with yourself around some of those. And what are some of your non-negotiables that you want to uh, put in place around your finance? For example, I'll use finance as an example. Three sort of key words that we use, and for any of you working in the hypnotherapy area, you'll be familiar with these. We use the expression up until now, because what that does, it aligns your brain that something different is going to happen. For example, could I invite everybody to fold their arms just as you normally would? Just fold your arms in the normal way. Okay. And now fold them the other way. Anyone notice anything? Well, some people awkward fold the other way. way. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but some people it's really awkward. And then we'd say one of these expressions, up until now, yeah, it's awkward. Or in the past it was, or I'm not able to practice it yet. However, if you keep practicing folding your arms the other way, over time, of course, it will work. And everything we do just simply becomes an area for practice. Or we don't talk about weaknesses, we talk about areas for practice. And when we look at our five things, areas that we're going to practice, we want to bring these keys in now, the five keys for our success. When we start to think about our thumb, and this is where you're going to start writing now, so take one of those five, take the first one that you wrote down, what is your vision for that? What is your non-negotiable around that one? So if you are really good at handing out your money everywhere other than yourself, that is your, you love spending, maybe one of your non-negotiables might be that you'll start a budget from now, as an example. And in your thumb area, you're writing what your non-negotiables are around each of those five areas. You may not get it finished right now because it may require some thinking time. I'm getting the ball, simply getting the one of those juggling balls rolling for you <laughs> or juggling. So can you give another example area, other than, can you give another example? Other maybe than finance? Other, other okay, than so finance? So maybe it's people. fitness. Maybe it's okay. fitness. Maybe you'll start to exercise twice a week. People, if you start to go, I'm going to exercise every day, that's not going to happen. Let's say you're going to start twice a week. And after 21 cycles of something, you you start to take that on as a habit. And so what we want to do is build our habit muscle. We want to start to build that so it becomes a habit for us. It might be fitness. So rather than go out every day, I've go, got to go and do something. It's simply, okay, I'll do this twice a week. As long as I've done it twice a week, then that's okay. So, for example, I've got a pool where I live and I promised myself that I'm going to swim every day, which I don't. So now I've got, given myself permission twice a day and uh, twice a week. And I've started again. Monday's always good for me to start. <laughs> so I started this Monday knowing I was going to be on the call today. No, I started this Monday and I, I thought I'll do it twice a week to get myself back into the rhythm. What is it that you need to do, or maybe around your fitness or your well-being? Maybe it's around having fun. Maybe it's around community involvement. What is one of your non-negotiables that you're going to do from now around one of those five areas? The next key in our is our finger, which is setting our direction. It's making sure that we're really clear about the frequency. So this is the frequency now. So if you're going to decide you're going to get fit, you're going to budget, you're going to improve the relationship with your with one of your 
siblings or maybe one of your children, let me ask you this question. There's two questions I want to ask now. When I speak to you about your children, regardless of age, do you like them or do you love them? Now, some people go, oh, yeah, I really love them. No, my question is, do you like them? Do you like them as a person? Now, I've been really fortunate. I absolutely like my children. And that was really easy for me. My question is, do your children like you? And so that brings me to the next question, which is about the labels that we have above our heads. When you think about someone that you get on really well with, what's the label above their head? Dory, if you think about someone you get on really well with, what's the label above their head when you talk to them? Or have a sense of, or maybe see. Oh, terrific person or understanding. Yeah. Right. Or kind or loving, all of those kind, things. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Thank you. And what's the label above someone's head that you don't get on so well with? Yeah, that one. <laughs> what happens is we tend to talk to that label. And when we're talking to someone that we don't particularly like, then what happens is our voice, our stance, our intonation, all of those things are the cues that the other person receives, which of course they respond to. And so we start to recognize that the liking of someone becomes really important. And it will, in my model of the world, equally as important as loving. So if you've got a one or a two around siblings or your parents or your children then or your partner sometimes, <laughs> then what is it, the label, that you might need to change or maybe even move it to neutral so that there's no emotional charge around it? And so that starts to put our direction. So what are the actions so that you're moving in that direction? So what actions will you take from now or up until now that will move you in the direction of a five for that relationship or a four. So maybe four, is, if you ended up with a four, you'd be really happy. So Can you give me an example? You had shared an example with me, Denise, that from somebody that you worked with around oh, yeah. a work relationship. Okay. Maybe share that because I think it's, it's a really helpful example. Sure. So a friend of mine who knows that this is the crazy way I work, that I said to, because he was, had a really important meeting to go to, and I said, what's the label above this person's head before when you speak to them? And, and he told me, and I said, oh, I said, could you think of something else? And I said, could you move it to neutral? Or could you think lovely lady? And he goes, she's no lady. I said, no, but could you think lovely lady? And he goes, well, anyway, we had a bit of a conversation and he was prepared to, so he went to the meeting and he rang me after the meeting and I said, how did the meeting go? He said, really? well I said what label did you have above her head and he said lady and believe me that was a huge step up <laughs> for him he'd moved it to neutral and how do you move it so that there's a non-emotional charge around it because it will have you in a much more confident state to actually have a relationship with that person it, it takes it gives you back your own power around that relationship and that's really important so, but it, but it, you know what it also does, Denise, that I think so helpful is it, it gets you more conscious and intentional of how you're thinking, what your assumption is, because there always is that verbal and nonverbal. And I think sometimes we just don't pay attention to how we're feeling about the person and how that mm -hmm. does then impact how we're interacting with them. So it's, I think it's just very, a uh, very helpful approach. Okay, so now I've got the really most interesting one. So let me ask your listeners, what's their belief around retirement? Retirement to me means on a big sheet of paper, I'd like you to just keep asking yourself five times after this conversation and use the pen in your opposite and your least dominant hand. Retirement means to me, up until now, because remember, you can change your beliefs. You just simply start to let go of some of the things that you no longer serve you. So on a clean sheet of paper, retirement means to me or for me, whatever sentence, and you repeat that five times with your pen in your least dominant hand. And that way you'll start to access some of the true beliefs that you hold around retirement. And then you can move some of those into this next part about the five keys to your own personal retirement success and how you can revolutionize your retirement. So the next one, which is our index finger, is around our flexibility. How might you need to be flexible around some of these areas in your life that up until now 
have been less than a, a four or less than a five? How can you be flexible? So take one of those as an example now. How can you be more flexible around that? So what could be the colors of the rainbow around that rather than a black and white? For example, which I gave before, if you decided you're going to get into the fitness field, then maybe starting twice a week, just put your gear on and go without thinking about what it is you're going to do. Rather than talk yourself out of it, can you talk yourself into it? Because I think sometimes we're really good at talking ourselves out of stuff. We give ourselves all the reasons why not, rather than all the reasons why. I know probably some of your listeners don't do that. Just some, just, they may know people who do. Uh, <laughs> great reasons about why they, they're not going to do something. Okay, the next one, your commitment to this. How are you going to demonstrate your commitment to this? What are you committed? Are you going to tell somebody this is what your plan is? other than yourself, because if you can tell someone else, then they may be able to hold you to that. So how will you make the commitment? How are you going to get this commitment to yourself? You're going to write it up. You're going to whatever you tell someone, tell your kids. I went, went to get myself swimming again. I had my younger son. He is so disciplined. It's just amazing, he and his wife. I'll, I'll just quickly tell you this other funny story. Okay, so they're really disciplined around time. And for them, demonstrating respect to them means that I'll turn up on time. I have no concept of time. So for those of you who understand time, operating in in time, you use language about. So I'll say, I'll see you about five o'clock, which could be five past, quarter past, 20 past. I have no concept. Whereas they're what's called, referred to as through time. So they know exactly what time anything is. So they like dinner at six o'clock. So then when I go for dinner, I have to get myself ready at four. I set my alarm seven minutes fast. I have my clock seven minutes fast because that way I trick myself. And then I get ready to leave and get there by six. Now, remember, I start myself getting ready at four o'clock. They live 10 minutes away. And I have to, because I I think, oh, I've got plenty of time and can fit 75,000 things in, which of course I can't. And except I still tell myself I can. And so then I'll turn up. And if I'm one minute late, he'll hold the door open. He goes, you're late. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he's now become a dad and it's just so delightful because time he's had to be a little bit negotiable and a bit flexible on it <laughs> and and his son loves them so much he doesn't want to go to sleep any time during the day and I'm so happy for them <laughs> what do they say what comes what goes around comes around <laughs> you'll see it's really funny. Okay, and the last one is about the fun factor. How are you going? If you already do that, then this will be an easy one for you. If you, How will you bring the fun factor into each of those five areas that you've listed? What's one thing that you could do that would be more fun? Maybe some of you might watch the, the video date night and you might start to set up your date nights once a week and surprise each other. What's going to be a fun fact around your relationship? What's your action plan? And then with your flexibility, you you might want to bring in a contingency plan. So these are the ways that we can juggle all the balls that are required in our life and that we stop giving ourselves the crumbs or anyone else and that we actually honour who we are and the wonderful person that we are as we stand for the light. And and either the model that our children and our friends can actually see some of the learning from. And I think that's what makes life exciting. I I think this is so wonderful, Denise. I I do want to honour. I know it's one o'clock and some people are needing to get off, but Denise has mm. said she'd stay, a, say little, if a, a, yeah. a little bit longer if there are questions. I, I did want to just share one comment in terms of the what labels on the top of the head. Loretto from Colorado shares this wonderful example where she says that her youngest was very challenging and his nickname was his name Monster, Adam Monster, and they changed it to Adam mm-hmm. Angel. And mm-hmm. so when it was Adam Angel, it caused them to see his behavior through a totally different lens and filter and it's such a beautiful example of what we're saying and it does it's like magic because once yeah. you label something then if the label's working it'll work right. whether it be something positive or not so positive positive. and once you label mm-hmm. something positive the magic unfolds yeah oh that's right. lovely thank yeah. you that's an yeah. excellent example 
Do you want to just share any other kind of final thought? I think this has just been terrific discussion and getting people thinking, but what any other kind of takeaways you'd like to share? Maybe before I have you do that, I just do want to remind everybody that this is the fourth Tuesday of each month. And so September 23rd, I hope you'll join. You can sign up the week before. And Dr. Carl Singer, who's a gerontologist, is going to join us and really talk about some of the medical issues, both for the boomers population, but also as we get older. So I think it's going to be a really terrific call. I've also heard him speak, and he's really wonderful. And so I'm hoping that all of you will remember to sign up starting around the 16th of the month and be part of that call. But so now back to you, Denise. What other final thoughts about your way, your approach, the non-negotiable, the rules, what are, any other things to help people take with them? It, one of the things that, that is really important is how often do they just take time to stop and, mm-hmm. and give themselves the time for reflection? And life is so fast for all of us now, and I guess we're torn between the families and grandkids and also some of the things that are important for us in reading or learning. And how often in, in the day do people go for the for a meditative walk or sitting in the sun or sitting on the lounge and just having things stop. And where in their day do they do that? Or is it possible to set up an alarm so that between 11 and 11.30 every day, for example, that's your time? And one of the challenges often people make is that they start to have less and less crumbs and give themselves more and more value is to say, this is my time. And for the half hour, it phones off and undisturbed and sit outside or wherever it is that you need to sit. And I go back to that couple that have been married now 60 odd years and he that loved listening to music, but she felt guilty sitting down and listening to her music. And so it was about giving herself permission to sit down for half an hour a day to to listen to some music that she liked. And that already has created a change in herself because it's given herself some confidence to say no. And that, how do you put the boundaries around? So if you're in constant demand because perhaps you've tra- been trained or you've trained people. So, for example, sometimes we can train people to need us. And so they can't make any decisions unless they run stuff past us. Who has trained you to be on call for them? Conversely, who have you trained to be on call for you? And so when we start to realize that the relationship and the dynamics sometimes are things that we've actually unintentionally set up ourselves, maybe we've got to start to see that those are some of our non-negotiables. So mm. what are some of the areas in your life where you've trained somebody to really have a high need for you, whereas you've been less in the, the responsibility for themselves? So that may be something that people might like to consider as well. Mm. That's such an excellent point. I often say to people in line with what you're saying that um, sometimes we create a situation where where we feel very special in whatever role or, as you're saying, in the way we train people, but it's a burden specialness. And when you become Mm -hmm. conscious of it, you can say, that's not necessarily good for me or them, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. and absolutely really important to think about at this stage of life, at any stage of life, really. Yeah. Um, And so here I am in my retirement that I can't really go and enjoy myself because I've created a need within my family so that any time I have for myself, I feel selfish rather than mm -hmm. this is the time that I've worked really hard for. And that's why I got people to write down what does retirement mean for me. And Mm -hmm. once you start to write those down, then you'll start to realize that there's a part of you that maybe feels a bit sad or feels a bit disappointed. And remember, as part of that, it's that letting go of that grief cycle, particularly if who you are has always been the job you've done. And it's about how do you build in that separation because you are not your job and it's who you are that's the most important. It seems to me that's a beautiful place to to end. And I just want to say how wonderful this has been. And I've gotten some emails from some 
comments from people just saying, wonderful call. Larry from West Virginia says that really thinking about these above the head labels gives you the power to place a positive label really above everybody because everybody has something positive, some positive attitude. And it's and another comment, obtained your label of selfish to self-care so that you don't have to feel guilty when you take time for yourself. I think that you've really been, I, I think you've gotten people really thinking about some of these ways that we juggle the balls and either give others the crumbs or get the crumbs ourselves and it's time to change that. So thank mm-hmm. you so much for waking up and being with us and <laughs> sharing all this. Thank you all. And Denise, thank you so much for being with us and I'm just really I just feel like it's been a wonderful call. Thank you. Pleasure. And thank you for the opportunity. And and so if you're with somebody right now or not, just give yourself a high five because you've run the distance <laughs> and all the best and have the best part of of today. And my question to you is what's the fun factor for the day? Uh, I've just had my nice. fun, so thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Take care. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Bye. You've been listening to Revolutionize Your Retirement Radio with Dr. Dorian Mincer. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show, listen to past episodes, or download our free retirement transition guide, visit revolutionizeyourretirementradio.com. 